And welcome back to the Xfinity Desk HES Pro League Fall Season, and we're getting ready to head into match number three of week two, day two, and that's Luminosity going up against Brody Esports. You almost forgot for a second. Almost God. forgot for a second. Good thing the graphic came in. I was going to say, some of these uh, org <laughs> changes and name changes here, but we got this going here. Like we said, Luminosity versus Ronin. And what I want to take a look at here is this Luminosity Gaming roster because they did come off of a win last week, an amazing win. The reverse sweep over Evil Geniuses, 50-48, I want to say, was that last and final game. And definitely some misplays happening by Evil Geniuses in that one to give Luminosity that win. Now, one of the guys here on this team that is really stepping up, one of the coveted free agent players here that we've seen for quite some time now, is going to be Saiyan. Yeah, Saiyan, he's been looking solid, taking a look at his profile. Definitely one of the top players, if not the top player on this team. Him and Trippy, the duo, they have Rain and APG rounding out the squad. They're going up against Ronin, who was looking fairly solid yesterday, especially new addition to that squad, Sabinator, as we go ahead and take a look at Ninja, who is no longer on that team. Rain coming in and filling some very big shoes, but yet Rain, I think, doing a pretty solid job so far. Yeah, I mean, Rain has definitely been performing well. Started to struggle a little bit when he was on Liquid, had a, some decent performances while he was on straight, but now he's definitely kind of gotten refocused and has been performing very well here on this new roster. Yeah, and I'm curious to see what this li uh, line of game types are that's going to be coming up for this series. And there they are, Plaza Strongholds to start, Eden Slayer, Truth CTF, Rig Strongholds, Coliseum Slayer. So what a round of game types coming up. I cannot wait to see this. A lot of teams, they practice Strongholds Plaza as game number one whenever they do their team scrims. So very popular game number one here. And we did just see that in the previous uh, matches as well. Optic and Envy played this very well against one another. Eden Slayer we also saw in game number five. So a lot of those same game types popping up here and we're gonna see how these teams are gonna execute their strategies. So Tom, going into this series here, we've got Luminosity obviously coming off of their win, Ronin also coming off of a win. Who is this series benefiting? Well, I think that the probably smart choice here, if you were gonna go and say who's the favorite, I think Luminosity is the favorite. Okay. I feel like Ronin could be due for something big though. And if they were to ever win a series where they could be the underdog, I'm gonna go with this series here, so. I don't know. I, I, I'm i going to go with LG in game number five, I guess you can say. But I'm going to I'm gonna guess that Ronin's going to give them a big run for their money. If not, maybe even take the series. So okay. that's a very teetering prediction. When it, I, I'm, it's tough for me to choose. Again, it's the same thing as LG versus EG, right? Mm -hmm. And both of those teams very evenly matched. EG went up 2-0 in that series. LG won three in a row. We could see something very similar here. Yeah, we're getting the players set up in the game, so we'll get this one underway here in just a moment. Ronin versus Luminosity. APG Rain, the newest additions here to this squad. Of course, APG came over in the previous season. Rain acquired during this offseason. Then L-Town, Sabinator, Straight Sick, and Suspector rounding out Team Ronin here. And L-Town and Sabinator as well have been doing they played extremely great. well in Week 1. They played great yesterday. Even in Week 2, they did great. And, um, you know, you can't even miss out on the fact that Sabinator had that fantastic Fathom CTF in game number three. Elton in the interview even saying, hey, he won us that game, especially with the flag return that he had as the last guy alive. He went positive 10 in that game as well. So I'm looking out for him. I'm also looking out for Straight Sick and Suspector. These guys, they haven't gotten going fully yet. They've kind of been sitting on that kind of playing up to par, around average for their likings. I know that they want to come in and have a big series here, so we're starting this one off with Suspector. Yeah, and it looks like two members of Ronin are pushing into Yard. Nobody from Luminosity went over this way, so this is going to be Yard and Shotgun uncontested to Ronin, but the other two members of Ronin get taken out immediately in that 4v2 situation, and now we are seeing Control and Strongholds going over in favor of Luminosity, so you got to say the opening strategy definitely going over to LG here. 
Yeah, that's good for them. Suspector, he's kind of sitting here waiting for his opportunity to strike. Has the shotgun and battle rifle, so two very powerful guns. I believe that was a camouflage player to his left. He didn't see that. We saw it on the player outlines, but he is not aware of this player towards his left. Trippy flying out. Shots getting registered across the map from Suspector. Now he's whipping off that shotgun. It's going to be APG crouching down below, still not doing anything with that camo. Giving tons of information to his teammates, though. Now he's going to pop off and shoot. There's APG there, popping out with the camo, getting picked off by L-Town. It's going to be two dead, however, for Ronin. So nice job from APG distracting, giving information on over to his teammates. And now Spectre trying to do some work with that shotgun. And he has to do it quickly because triple cap is an effect. And definitely a great job jumping up to S4 and helping uh, get some damage down onto the player there before going for the hill. So it was a triple cap momentarily for Luminosity Gaming, but not going to be for long as they're going to be trading off Stronghold Control. I don't see them contesting this bottom mid here quite yet. Three members capture that so quickly. And just like that, Luminosity, somebody's trying to make their way over to Ness. Whether or not Suspector can make this jump, get up here and contest this is another question. We'll see. He's still got three shots left in this shotgun, so he should, shouldn't have too much of a problem. But as I say that, saying the guy we were highlighting right before this extremely clutch play picks up that kill and secures himself the shotgun. Yeah, and someone that's having himself one hell of a game so far is Trippy, who also has as many kills as all three of his teammates combined. So a fantastic start for him. Rain now making his way on over towards the nest. That's going to be a triple cap again here for Luminosity. Great job for them, great start for them, especially with this camouflage on the map. APG, he's gonna get a kill onto Suspector. Sabinator's gonna answer that right back with a trade onto Trippy. What's gonna be the play around the camo, though? It looks like that's gonna be a player picking it up from Luminosity, I believe. That was, let's see, that's Saiyan over there, Tommy. So he also has shotgun and battle rifle. Very deadly combo, could put it to use. Yeah, we'll see. He's still got plenty of ammo here left in this weapon. I like this route going in, trying to contest Yard. Catches that player on his screen. Sabinator gets dropped. That's a numbers advantage with control still. So saying, I'd like to see him go over to S4 or something here. We'll see ultimately where he decides to go. Gets those hit markers, knows there's a player down by Hotel. Finishes off that one here. And still, as long as they can contain Drone uh, and keep at least one member dead at all times, they should be able to just run away here. This is tough, because I'm looking at the kills right now. L-Town with one, Suspector with one, and Suspector, he lived for a good two minutes in the beginning of that game with shotgun battle rifle, probably laid down a decent amount of assists, but Saiyan is on a killing frenzy. 10 kills in this game, so I'm wondering if he's 10 and 0 right now, maybe sitting at 10 and 1 or 10 and 2, maybe started this game with two straight thefts, but we're highlighting how Trippy had as many kills as his entire team combined. Now we're looking at Saiyan with as many kills as Trippy and Rain combined. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, still got one shot left, and the shotgun does get taken out. Nice job there by Straight Sick to finish off that one. Ooh, with that Plaza Pistol, he grabbed himself two kills. Some clutch individual plays is exactly what Ronin needs here. If they have any chance left in this game, we will see them start to put points back on the board, but they have a big deficit to overcome here down by 70 points. Yeah, that's a lot to make up. They probably are gonna need a triple cap of their own. They're gonna need to get this camouflage coming up here soon in the next 30 seconds or so. APG trying to do whatever he can over towards the yard area, doing a nice bait and switch over there. Sabinator gonna fall for that one. Suspector, he's just locking this area down, waiting for these players to push. Immediately taken down to no shields. You could see all of the members from Luminosity doing a great job of their positioning on the map, all spread out fairly evenly. Now they're rotating down towards bottom center. Wow, what a play from Rain. Now the L now L Town's the last guy alive. And I don't think he's gonna be able to do much. Saiyan's gonna drop him as well. They have staggered spawns, and then eventually they're gonna be able to rotate towards bottom middle and Ness. So you're gonna have to make your way over towards yard or contest bottom middle. Both are not ideal situations for Ronan. Yeah, I mean, that's a big, tough loss to take. I mean, have they been able to secure that kill and maybe stay alive, but it was a no health kill there that we saw from Adam Luminosity. That would have allowed L-Town to potentially survive with that camo, but instead it goes over in the hands of Saiyan, and we're seeing what he's doing with it. Constantly disrupting Ronan's flow, trying to push out here, keeping players no shields, making them constantly check their backs. And this is a scary moment because I like this play here. Luminosity elects to go for a yard, but doesn't work out in their favor. Straight's a great individual kill there. Will buy a little additional time. That is a huge kill right there from Straight Sick onto Saiyan. He's also going to help capture bottom middle. 
They need to make plays like that, and they need to make them consistently, Kyle, because they are down so much. We said they needed the triple cap. They found it. Can he get the two-shot melee? No. APG, he's going to find one. L-Town's going to answer that back with a shotgun. It's going to be three dead temporarily for Luminosity. One player pops back up off spawn, but you're going to need to continue to hold this as long as possible. L-Town looks like he wants to give this one up. The player did get out of yard, so he, now he's going to contest it a little bit. APG flooding back in. That's going to be three dead, so not what they were looking for on the Ronin side. And now Rain going to rotate down towards Prius. It's going to be a truck versus Prius battle. Multiple players hopping in bottom middle. That's almost going to be game. APG finds a double kill. Possibly looking for the triple as another player's no shields. Rain going to clean that one up. Altown last guy alive. What's the play for Altown? You can only get into one stronghold and you have Rain going into another one, adding more pressure with Trippy. So that is going to be it if they can kill this player. Do they get the reset on over towards Ness? I don't believe that they do. Triple cap in effect. That is going to be game number one going on over to LG. Yeah. 100 to 50. Very convincing win from LG. Only really uh, allowing Ronan to get back into it with one spree where they had that triple cap, but Luminosity was such a great lead. They did not have to force anything or rush anything. They took their time, they set up, and one well-executed push completely broke that setup. Three went down. They battled for bottom middle, regained control, and took game number one here. Take 17 and four coming out from Saiyan. Zero assists, but doesn't really matter when you go on a killing frenzy and you're doing things on your own. Just go for it, man. Four perfect kills from Trippy. About a third of his kills were perfects, which is absolutely ridiculous to think about. Meanwhile, you got Rain on top of the objective. APG 9, 8, and 12. Nothing really doing on the other side. I mean, L-Town 6 and 13. He goes negative 7, most negative on his team, but still with the most assists. I mean, it was just an overall team effort. You can't look at any individual in that type of performance from Ronan. That was a very underwhelming game one from them. They are definitely going to have to bounce back here. Game two, I believe, was Eden Slayer. So Eden Slayer, they're playing from the red side as well. Going to give another opportunity here for LG to get something going in the beginning. You have to try to make some plays and make sure that these guys are not getting the sniper rifle to start. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great snipers in here. Trippy's had his fair share of highlights. Saiyan and Rain, even, especially. You got to point out Rain, who's had you know, phenomenal sniper sprees when he was on straight, when he was on Team Liquid, and now again while being on Luminosity here. On the flip side, Straight Sick, uh, Suspector L Town, all three of them have had great performances, consistently can put up numbers with the power weapons, uh, sniper included there. So, yeah, I mean, Slayer, Eden. This is a game type that normally goes to the more uh, prepared team, to the team that's set up more correctly. We saw that from Envy versus Optic in that game number five here. Envy knew exactly what they wanted to do. Very rarely have we seen the map split in a way where there's three members uh, spread across like security side from Blue Plat to Top Cat Walk to Low Cat uh, over towards red side on the map. And then all of Optic Gaming was forced outside. So clearly these guys had been in that situation before and knew how they wanted to set up. Yeah, and going back to Plaza, when you look at the beginning there that happened and how Ronan was just a little bit too slow. It was Suspector staying alive again for two minutes and only picking up one kill for the first maybe three or four minutes of the game. That's just not very acceptable because you got to make some plays with that shotgun. You got to get aggressive. I understand that you don't want to, you know, give it up. But again, there's nothing that you can do when your teammates are falling all around you and you're the last guy alive. The only thing that they could have done differently in Ronan's side which again, I'm, I'm still just not a big fan of teams that spawn red side in Plaza going on over towards the yard. You saw Optic Gaming do it. It didn't work out for them. They stuck each other and it was just a, a complete disaster. Yes, they came back, but it was 50 to zero to start for them. So we'll see what the beginning strategy here is on Eden. First strike going on over to Rain. Sniper still sitting there and then you do see Sabinator picked up the overshield. So that's good from the red side. Now the focus obviously going towards getting control of blue and eliminating where Rain is currently located. That's on the blue platform. Yeah, we're seeing a similar kind of setup that I was just talking about in that Optic Envy game here. You got three or all four members of Ronin outside of the map. Now they're starting to try to push into blue here and contest. You got Tommy or Saiyan there hiding in blue. Rain sitting on this platform, putting down shots, keeping the aggression or holding the aggression off. Saiyan's got that sniper rifle, connects on one body shot. The player stays alive, but Slow that, game. But yeah, pushes down the aggression. Two to zero, one minute into the game. That's crazy. Now it's four to zero right when that happens. So twice the amount of kills that we saw in 50 seconds happening in a matter of five seconds. Very slow to start this one. 
Great for Luminosity, though. They did the same thing against Optic Gaming, where they slowed it down. Optic Gaming obviously slowly but surely picked them apart, especially when they had control and multiple sniper rifles in their hands. But they don't have the overshield time on the Luminosity side. That's kind of the only thing that they got to worry about right now is making sure that they don't forget because they weren't the team to pick that one up. They're going to have to add aggression on over towards where APG's at on the catwalk. Maybe send a guy outside to snipe. Or maybe even just try to get that green gun and try to melt the overshield guy as he picks it up because you don't want to give up control. Yeah, and this game is slowed down a lot, even though it was slow to begin here. You've got all of Ronin currently sitting at goose eggs as no one has picked up a kill yet, and they're all kind of hiding, waiting for this next overshield. Yeah, that's the right play, though. I really appreciate the strategy that goes into something like this because, yes, it seems slow now, but that is why the power-ups are on the map. They're caused to create commotion and have some engagements going on, forced movement and see rotations. And that's what's going on is you now see the players making their way for that overshield. It's going to be L-Town grab. You saw Saiyan, he actually accidentally sniped the wall instead. Does connect on a couple of body shots. Now all of L-Town's overshield has been depleted and Sabinator's no shield, Suspector's no shields as well. That is a disaster and kind of a weird route for L-Town to take that going into the open. He could have got the same exact route going somewhere else, maybe outside or maybe even charge towards blue. It looked like he wanted to get into security with that one. And now he's popping back out where he originally lost his overshield. So not what he wanted at all if you're Ronin. And now they're starting to push in. At least they find their first kill on the board. Straight Sick comes in with the flank over towards the alley. So now they're gonna have to send more people over here to help. No, no scopes connecting for Saiyan. Good grenade from Straight Sick. APG pushes in. He gets stuck. The trade comes in, but yet Saiyan's still alive. So that's good for Luminosity. Yeah, and then finally Ronin putting three kills here on the board. Saiyan gets taken no shields. This is Luminosity's time. They need to start making something happen here now. Fortunately, nobody pushes up. They're still playing this one extremely slowly. Ooh, now it's like Suspector appears on radar. Saiyan's on the hunt right now. It does take that player no shields. Suspector nowhere to go here. Saiyan finishes that one off. Yeah, and Saiyan, you know, this may be boring for some people. They may say, hey, this is too slow, but... This is how you play it when you're playing for something that means something. And you can see these guys really want to win, so they don't want to give up any dumb deaths. They're trying to play it by the book. They're trying to play around the overshield when they don't have control, look for opportunities. Sand gets that killing spree. He's really been the big difference maker in a five kill game. So we'll see what happens, because this next overshield is going to be popping up. And now both teams have the time on that, because we did see Elton pick it up from Saiyan's point of view. Yeah, well now we're going to see what happens. Wow, what a great stick there from APG. 180 stick, finishes off the kill. Doesn't shoot that player at all. Big kills coming in. And wow, Ronan really getting back into this one. Straight Six found that sniper in his hands as well. He picks up a kill. Now we see Straight Six versus Trippy right here. Trippy knows he's there. Straight Six has no idea. And just like that, doesn't even take him weak. And that sniper is now yep. back over to Luminosity. Yeah, that's a good point, Kyle. He didn't take him weak. And that's something that you need to try to do. You try to get that death melee off. You try to just lay down as much damage as possible right before you drop. And now Trippy, he's just going to be able to rotate and do whatever he wants. APG, he used his overshield. He pushed it on over towards security. Stayed alive. That's all you need to do. Saiyan, he's got the Hydro Launcher as well. Meanwhile, Rain, he's got the noob combo in his back pocket. And they're still picking up kills. So we'll see if LG is going to be able to run away with this one. Because even though they have had a setup, for quite some time and main, can maintain control for about 80% of this game. Ronan, they're still remaining in striking distance and that's what they're doing by slowing this game down. And you may frustrate the, your opponents and try to force out mistakes that they may not typically do. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. This is definitely something Luminosity struggled with in the past and what comes to mind is, uh, you know, Ninja is one of those players that hates sitting back and, and playing a game type like this. So now with the new rock lineup, it is working out in their favor a little bit more, uh, especially that they're able to hold on to this lead. Now still two dead here for Ronin. Last two guys are spawning over towards blue side of the map. So yeah, as long as Luminosity maintains this, they are sitting pretty. Yeah, and again, it's all going to come down to the overshield. It's been obvious since the beginning of this game that that's what Ronin wants to try to do. They want to try to slow this down. We've already touched base on it. LG, they are comfortable with this. They are not going to give. They are not going to budge. There's zero reason for them to leave this spot. They can hold red base just fine. They have four shots left. All they have to do is bait this new sniper rifle and worry about the overshield. And look at that. People are peeking 
and poking for no reason on Ronin. If you're going to slow it down, you cannot give up deaths like that. Yeah, and up by 10 kills. Now this is when you're starting to feel really comfortable. That overshield's getting ready to come up any second now, but Trippy is not missing. Picks up the hat trick already. Still up by 10 as L-Town answers a kill back onto APG here. That overshield is just going over to suspect your luminosity, even with those picks to choose not to contest the overshield. Right. So Trippy, is he gonna is he gonna play aggressive with this sniper rifle or is he gonna rotate it away? Sure enough, good decision. Rotates that away right past Saiyan, who also has that sniper rifle. So Ronin, they want to force some up close battles now. The last thing they want to do is keep a standoff going when you've got two members of Luminosity that just get to rotate around the sniper. Yeah, and what you're seeing is um, a little bit of a shift in strategy from when teams wanted to always contest the overshield to now they're okay with giving it up because they've seen that you can still continue to melt that player. Meanwhile, on the other end, Ronin, they are still looking for their first opportunity to do something with that overshield. So we'll see if all this patience is going to pay off. Yeah, just great shots and angles coming out of Luminosity here. And just like that, APG picks up a melee trippy stick Sabinator without him even showing on screen until the stick connects and a collapse coming in. Perfect timing here for Luminosity. Hunting down the last player from Ronin on blue side. That's straight sick. 31 to 15, and this game is not close, Tom. It's not close, but there's still opportunities if they can get some setups going on. But what they got to be worried about now is that they've slowed it down so much that if it continues to get slowed down and they don't force the action, that this timer is just going to run out and they're going to lose based on the time. So Alaton picks up a kill right there, but they need this next overshield. They need to get the sniper rifles out of Zane and Trippy's hands. It's a good start killing the support players right there, APG and Rain. Not necessarily support players, but the guys supporting the guys with the weapons currently. So this could be their opportunity. They have not been able to capitalize again at all. Luminosity refusing to budge. Yeah, and Trippy grabbing himself. Yeah, another double kill this game. They have both snipers still. I think Trippy is out of ammo in his, but Saiyan still got plenty to work with. Rain loses a 1v1 to straight sick here. So that's going to give him another point on the board. So by no means out of the game quite yet. We've seen monstrous comebacks in the past. But now, even with all that focus on overshield for so long, this one goes over to Luminosity. Yeah, this is a very unfortunate game right now for Sabinator. 8 and 10 for Spectre. Eltown, he's negative 2 as well. Straight Sick, he's negative 2. Meanwhile, Save is, or Sab is 1 and 11, sitting at negative 10 in a 14 kill game. So, definitely one of his worst performances that we've seen so far. But it's difficult to kind of get something going in a game like this where maybe Save wants to play, or Sab wants to play aggressive and. Maybe he's just not on the same page as his teammates. Keep in mind, he is the newest addition, so slowing it down, definitely favoring LG. Keep in mind, they are the experienced team in this. We've already seen them in a pro league in standoffs before, and they executed that fairly well. So here's the opportunity that's coming up. You do have Sab, Sab now pushing in there, trying to find some more kills, but not able to do so. Again, everybody from LG just turtling here. They realize the scenario. Two and a half minutes left. Don't give up any deaths, and they're mathematically eliminated from this game. Yeah, you're exactly correct there. With only two and a half left to play, the last thing they want to allow to happen is for this game to get close, potentially send it into an overtime or eventually a replay here. So they just have to sit back. There's so many kills you need to get. When you add on respawn timers here, it, it, there's just not enough time in the game to get back into it in another 30 seconds or so. Yeah, it's, it's virtually over. I mean, they cannot turtle here. They have to realize the time is running out. And that's the Spectre, exactly at the right time. Real, well, not at the right time, he's really late, but right at the time that I was saying that, realizing that they gotta push. They need 16 kills in two minutes. They've gotten 23 kills in 10 minutes. What makes them think that they can now start to push and do it? Just a little too late, needed to do these plays two minutes ago and start getting some confidence and momentum really slowing it down here has come back to bite these guys gonna be a good experience for them overall they're gonna realize what to do and what not to do but still LG they're just thinking about winning this match and they are on the verge of doing so they're definitely gonna go up two to zero once this game clock runs out maybe LG can get to that 50 kill mark but I'd be shocked to see Ronan bring this back yeah I think you, you, luminosity already decided how they want to play the rest of that game and that is just going to be playing defensively running away and not giving up kills with so little time left in the game so rain he's got himself the sniper rifle 
We're gonna stay on board here with Sabinator, see what, what's been going wrong for him this game. He has been sniped a handful of times, gets shot in the back, just looking at the wrong place at the wrong time consistently. Once again, new player was above him, but gets charged instantly and perfected by Trippy, who's already has a ton of perfects this series. You're just That's not how it's going, to right? You, you see a guy, you predict where he's coming down towards the rest, red SMG, bottom red nest area, throw the grenade, he flies around the corner and perfects you. So that's the type of game it's been for Sabinator. It's a Spectre, he's losing a pretty big 1v1 down there as well. That's gonna be all she wrote here. Nice little no scope coming in from Meltdown, not able to connect, but again, it's just a matter of trying to pad the stats right here, especially if you're Sap, trying to get a little bit more towards even, keep that KD up just a little bit. The guy that was just doing work Ten yesterday seconds. now slowing down big time. And again, I think it's just one of those instances where you're the new addition to the team, most likely not used to the strategies of slowing it down, where to position. There's only so many spots that you can hide in a map like Eden. Eventually, you're going to go and get picked off, and that's exactly what happened. A very dominating game, even though eventually I think it was only a 10 or 12 kill game. LG zero chance of losing that game almost the entire time. Yeah, and it was finally when they started playing aggressive did Ronan even, you know, get any kind of kills on the board. You, they you saw it. You saw how much more confident they were when they were moving around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was when they were sitting still that they felt just really uneasy, really uncomfortable, and you could tell that by the amount of kills that Luminosity was able to get with the sniper rifles during those standoffs. The standoffs like that is when you need to have your backs in corners and, you know, there's no rockets you have to worry about there. So the last thing, you know, don't even have to worry about grouping up quite as much as previously. Uh, and they just weren't able to capitalize on anything. They needed to start playing aggressive around that five minute mark. I liked the passiveness in the beginning to not let a huge lead be built instantly. But then they just allowed that lead to continue to grow until it was too late to bring anything back. Yeah, and they're going to learn stuff from that game. That's pretty much what it was. Is Again, both of these squads have had roster changes, so there's definitely growing pains there. But LG, they are the more disciplined team in terms of that. They kind of got, uh, they kind of picked these guys apart in terms of letting them get the overshields, always keeping their sniper rifle guy alive. That was the key to victory there for Luminosity. Great support all around and, and it's easier said than done a lot of times you'll see other teams or even top teams sometimes get the setup and the overshield guy will go and push them i feel like they fell back a little bit too too far especially Altown when he grabbed that first overshield that was their opportunity to do it if it doesn't work that time what well, makes them think that they continue to do the same strategy over and over? Yeah, I mean, that L-Town overshield really kind of told the story of the game where he thrust slid bottom center, went too far, slid past the wall, took two body shots while he was kind of running into the wall trying to get into red one and cut off the angles, and then came back out the same spot, didn't get killed, but they were ready for him, anticipated him, and that overshield that they set up and waited for a minute and a half for was essentially negated and did nothing for them. Yeah, so now we move into a truth game where... Truth CTF, a fast-paced game. Should get the communication going, should get the competitive juices flowing again mm -hmm. for the team that's probably feeling a little bit stale after sitting around there. You saw them starting to charge, starting to get it going. That's the type of team that we know Ronan's going to be, but we didn't see it at all this series. Not in game number one, not in game number two. They have to get something going here. They have to maybe get a beginning opening cap up in a minute to get fired up again. These guys need to get some momentum. Yeah, I mean, I like the fact that they brought it back towards the end so they know they can still compete at this level here with this Luminosity squad. And, you know, like you said, it's a big learning uh, learning game for them. They should be able to uh, reflect on what went wrong and how slow they played it and just realize it doesn't fit their play style. And as we start this one off here with Suspector, two players going car, one going P-side. Looks like APG is going to be the one to secure this camo. Suspector has got to be listening to these call-outs. They know the player's car one. Sure enough, will pick up first strike 20 seconds into the game here. And now the collapse coming in for Ronan. Yeah, Ronan flying in, working with L-Town here. This is Spectre. One thing you got to watch out for, though, is APG was the camo guy throughout all this. So if you're running this pink side, be aware of that. But no, Sabinator are going to pick off the camo guy. APG drops. Trippy and Saiyan find two. So that's going to slow things down just a little bit. Now that flag is going to be returned. You can see Trippy going to hop up on that. It's going to be a return going on over to LG. APG gets a kill off of that respawn, and Trippy makes his way towards P3. That's one of the things that you got to be aware of. If you are 
an up-and-coming player or an amateur player, if you're pushing up P3, chuck a couple of grenades up P2 and then clamber up P3 and maybe wait for some more information, especially if you're one of the first guys to go and push up. Nothing's wrong with going and getting a height advantage and kind of scouting out for the rest of your team. And that was a thought process right there for Trippy. It gets shot down, but still a solid move nonetheless. Buying some time for his team now to go and push up. This flag is going to be pulled. APG needs to get a kill while he's running this one, though. Good effort, but still not checking all of the corners as multiple players for Ronin were set up for some defensive stands. Yeah, and we see last member of Luminosity briefly alive in the base. Finally gets taken out. So 4v2 situation. Flag is out for Ronin, but should be able to get that one return. But that's what you got to watch out for. Suspector gets taken out by P2 when they have the numbers advantage, when they should be grabbing control, and then he gets stuck into a 1v1 he loses. Yeah, and now APG is stuck underneath the base, so he's going to have to get out and try to make some moves. He does pick up a kill, so we're going to switch on over to L-Town. Got to get paint control camo coming up here soon in the next 10 to 15 seconds. Keep in mind, APG from Luminosity was the player to grab that. Kind of got an epic 1v1 going on, a little cat and mouse happening inside the tunnel area. L-Town with the perfect three-shot beatdown, and look at that, APG on top of the camo again. This time he's going to pick it up, run back to his base, wait for his teammates to spawn, and then reset the map. Yeah, we'll take a look what APG is doing here with this camo. Immediately going out to P3, just kidding, gonna miss the clamber. Looks like just gonna take another angle, go back up to P3. Rain grabs himself a kill, so you gotta be feeling pretty comfortable. Get spotted out, but not able to connect on those shots from L-Town. Find some time being a distraction here and will allow his team to start pushing in with some aggression. Trippy gets taken out. Two players alive below the base, one car side. So now APG's the one that's in a little bit of trouble here. Sabinator, though, not spawning him fast enough. His shields are still down. Ooh, sloppy shots. Yeah, sloppy shots by both players here. Now we see Luminosity. They are the playing defense now from below their base. But two dead for Ronin. They need to be careful. You can't be being too aggressive when you don't have the numbers in your side. And like we said, or just as we say that, Suspector wants to win this one. We won very badly, but you're playing defense here. You don't need to trade kills for Trippy. If Suspector dies in your base, you know he's going to come off spawn on the opposite side of the map. So just one of the things you have to do, just buy time, wait for your teammates when you're playing defense. Nice job getting into pink two right there from APG. Let's see if the rest of Luminosity can go and make a good push here. It's been just nonstop defense from both of these teams, Kyle. LG, they're looking to close this series out. You can see at the top of the scoreboard, two to zero in favor of them. They just had a very, very convincing win going on in Eden. But yet, Ronin, they're kind of hanging in there. And that's what you can you know, hope for if you're a Ronin fan, is that they can just make this as close as possible, hope that they can squeak out a cap and just get something going on their side, because this has been all LG. And a lot of that having to do with this man that you're seeing right there going on a killing frenzy in Plaza Strongholds. It's insane. Yeah, he's already got a, or on a killing spree here right now in this true CTF APG. Great grenades. Finishes off the kill on Suspector. Grabs himself a double kill. Last two players. One's no shields. Other one is weak in the base. Straight Six not going to be able to contest this one. There's just too many here for Luminosity. He's just doing everything he can to buy some time and stay alive. Suspector pushes back to his own base to try to clear that out. This flag is definitely going in. Wingman and a killing spree for Saiyan. Five kills without dying. Five assists in a row without dying, helping for 10 kills. So we were just talking about how he went on a frenzy. That's virtually just as good right there. One to zero for LG. Yeah, L-Town trying to do what he can, getting into the bubble here and putting as much pressure as possible. Gets flanked from another player, Carside, who's now migrated his way to top center. APG fighting over at P-Side, helps get Zayn a double kill here. Now Saiyan is pushing in in the base with Rain. So two players collapsing. They have numbers. Just as I say that though, Saiyan gets taken out. Back down to a 3v3. Ooh, and make that a 2v3. This is a good opportunity for Ronin uh -oh. as that push is shut down. Now Ronin finally getting some numbers on their side. Saiyan's the last guy alive. They're running this flag already without spotting him out. A little bit too excited there was Sabinator. Saying though, doing what he had to do. Stayed alive as the last guy alive and protected the flag. Straight sick, he's gonna pick up a double kill. Saying again, picking up another kill. 
This guy is doing great on the defensive end and on the offensive end right now. We'll see if Straight Sick can continue to add the pressure that Ronin desperately needs. Great grenade right there on the APG, but even better shots there from APG. Sappy's gonna answer. He's trying to run that flag, but bumps into L-Town. Oh no, it's just the type of game and series that it's been for these guys. Eventually getting this flag out down towards P1. Here's the route. He can't get around the corner though. And now it is going to be advantage on over to LG in terms of being able to get this flag return. There's a slowly bait it. I love the grenades coming in from Ronin, but just a little bit slow on the play there. And they're going to go and grab that flag. So great play by Ronin. They slow played the flag. However, they brought it to the front of the base. We were talking about that in the Optic Gaming series. You do not want to bring it over there. Try to bring it over towards the tunnel or the attic instead. Now the teammates spawn over in the bubble. Flag gets returned. Ronin, they gotta get that flag cap in order to try to stay alive in the series. Yeah, that's a heartbreaking flag capture loss for them as I think if they hadn't, you know, run into each other four to five times as he's trying to jump into the P attic, they would have gone. Felt like more than that. They could have been more than that. <laughs> they would have gone it around P side and probably put that flag. They in. gotta quit making out in the base, man. Yeah, that's, just that's what not used to call fun it. for anybody. Yeah, we're gonna call it something like that, but I don't think it was PG-13 Thompson. <laughs> As we see here, Suspector now trying to do what he can. Has two players weak. Gets a nice kill on the APG there, and it's gonna set himself up for prime position to grab another kill. Still being full health. Good thrust back. Melee, though. Yeah, I missed melee because that was a great thrust back from Rain. You're seeing, you know, brilliant individual plays coming in from both teams, but when you look at the teamwork that's coming in, it's just LG working more as a unit. They're one step ahead of wow, Ronin. everyone's dead. Everyone was dead right there. They're one step ahead of Ronin, and Ronin, they'll get something good going for them, and then LG will just take it right back. Yeah, still back over to Suspector again. He died in the base, came off spawn, is one of the last guys alive after that. But look at that teamwork from Luminosity. One P sides takes a player into his shields, the top center, and car three guys all focus their attention there. And that puts three dead for Ronin. So Ronan, they've been doing, you know, actually a pretty decent job at, you know, getting into the base, having an opportunity to run the flag, but the execution for them just isn't there. Yeah, and the kills are very even too, Kyle. So it's not like they're getting outslayed, and they've gotten outslayed very, poor, very heavily in the first two games of this series. But now the objective is getting ran at a very good time. It's going to be Rain tossing this flag out now towards his base, running at P1. There was two dead, three dead temporarily there for Ronan. Should be cap number two. Look out! Don't ground find your teammate saying he's going to get out of there. And Rain is going to put the second flag capture in. Three and a half minutes for Ronan to get something going. They need two caps to push this to overtime. Yeah, that's definitely a big task for them, especially when you've got players like Rain here playing an excellent defense and working with his teammates to buy some additional time. Suspector pops out weak, and those grenades were perfectly timed to contest that. L-Town, he wins a 1v1 and stays alive, so he's definitely doing what he can to get these, these, the squad back into it. They're gonna need a lot more than just a few 1v1s, Kyle. They need a bunch in a row. They need some flag pressure. They need to make sure that they're getting camouflage, holding pink control, escorting their flag guy back without dying because they need two, need two flag captures. But I'm just worried for Ronin right now. APG and the rest of this Luminosity squad have just looked so dominant in this series, in a series that's supposed to be extremely close. It has not been close at all. In my opinion, this has been the closest game we've seen so far, and it's still two to zero. One flag did get pretty close into the base for Ronan. They got it all the way to in front. I'd say about 80% of the way there, but still not onto the actual flag platform. And now APG is playing fairly sneaky. I wonder if Ronan knows that he's there. It looks like they do, so they're going to drop. Eltown doesn't know which side on that he's on, and he doesn't realize that there's two of them. So I suspect they're going to drop towards the tunnel and help. Like the thought process there for LG, but Ronan coming through with some good teamwork. Yeah, great job by Straitzik. Big 1v1 to win. Uh, not even getting taken, no shields there. Suspector, he's in his fight with Saiyan. Grabs that one. Still uh, no, no worry about camo here, as we are still, uh, well, you know, obviously there is still a worry about camo here, but being down by two fly captures, we've seen it done in the past, but whether or not Ronin has the uh, discipline to pull off a double cap like that is another story. Ooh, the body disrespect coming in. See, that's a good time to buy your suspect. You're up 2-0 to zero in the game. You're up 2-0 in the series. I'm not promoting it or anything like that, but I'll I'm just saying. It. I'm just saying, that's a good time. Yeah, yeah you're right. I like you're the timing right. of that. You're right. I mean, uh, 
Normally, you know, you always say, like, save the smack talk for after the series, but then if you win the series, you can't really talk smack talk because that just makes you... Yeah, or you could wait until the last, person. like, minute and a half. Yeah, you, you only got one real good opportunity. For you don't want to kick them while they're down. The you want to, like, kick them out on their way down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, now we're on board here still with Rain. He's got the camo. Players coming off spawn here over towards the bubble, but now a player from Luminosity just came off spawn in blue bubble as well. So he's going to be able to cut off that angle. The flag is being moved here for both teams. So still uh, some life for Ronin, but the three dead, I think that life is running out here. Last flag is being moved. Not only do they have to get this return, they've got to run and capture two flags right now, but nope, not going to be enough. They kill them at a perfect time. And then we see Luminosity take the series over Ronin three to zero, very convincingly. Yeah, that was a very convincing win, especially that last game where it seemed to be close. They clutched it up numerous times, didn't allow any flags to get captured. 3-0 in the series and 3-0 in the game. Yeah, and we'll take a look at the stats here. 27 and 23 here from Trippy. So very aggressive, picking up a lot of kills. Suspector on the other side, the only one really getting anything done for his team. L-Town had a lot of kills, a lot of assists as well. So he definitely did what he could. But, you know, moving across the board here, Flag grabs four, five, six here for Luminosity, only four for Ronin. And yeah, perfect kills still heavily in favor of Luminosity. That's what I'm kind of thinking about right now is how many perfect kills did Lumin Luminosity have that series? Because APG, Sane, and Trippy, these are all guys that pick up a lot of perfects. Rain even had three himself that game. Tough series for Ronin. I mean, we were coming in there expecting this to be one of the closer series and it didn't happen. I thought maybe they were gonna come out here and fight them off. You could see seven and a half minutes on the game clock, still zero to zero. This was their best performance out of the series, but once LG got the momentum, they continued to put it on them. Rain with that great flag run down towards P1, saying he had that killing spree. He also had the wingman medal. He also had the killing frenzy in that Plaza Strongholds game. So everybody filling the void. APG constantly going on over towards the pink side. And then, like you said, Trippy landing some great shots. So Ronan, they're going to have to really look at this series and evaluate what went wrong because, again, this is a, supposed to be a very even matchup on paper. And then coming into this one, it just nothing worked for them. Their strategies didn't work. They were playing fine individually, not nearly as good as they could, not nearly close to their best. But this was a four versus four in a team versus team game and they got outmatched in every aspect of the series. Yeah, I mean, I agree. And definitely Luminosity was setting themselves above Ronin here. And we do have an interview now with Saiyan here from Luminosity Gaming, somebody we don't get to talk to too often. Yeah. Uh, Saiyan, congratulations. Obviously, convincing win. You yourself had a pretty amazing series. Uh, lots of excellent sniping going on both times. Now, was this kind of what you were uh, expecting going into this Ronin series? Yeah. Honestly, yes. We uh, we've had some good matchups with them with our uh, our scrims, and uh, just how the games are going with Optic and Envy. Uh, even though they were three O's, not in our favor, but they were convincing games. I feel like to show that we are at least in it, and that we're not just going to give up free games to the considerably top best two uh, teams in the game. So it was expected. Yeah, I definitely think you did a really good job, and I agree with you. Your your series with uh, Optic Gaming and these other teams have been a lot closer than we've seen in some of the other series. Uh, now, what's it like playing with Rain over Ninja? As we know, uh, he's no longer on Luminosity. Um, with Rain over Ninja, it usually came down to playing at our own pace. I feel like with Tyler on the team, he brought a lot of pros and cons, but a lot of it came down. A lot of the cons were pretty much just him doing his own thing, trying to create a faster pace when it was really unnecessary. And then a lot of those slayers would come down to him dropping really bad numbers just because he's trying to speed it up and we need to slow it down. I feel like with Tim, at least, that uh, we can kind of just talk to him in game and say, like, we want to do this. And he's like, yeah, I'm down to do it. And then we're all together. I feel like we're definitely a solid unit. We all listen to each other. And huh? I feel like that's what Rain brings to this. I agree. Definitely a solid pickup for you guys. Seems to be working out fairly well. Now, Plaza Strongholds, you go on a killing frenzy, but at the end of the game, I think you had zero assists. How do you go the entire game without getting any assists? <laughs> well, with the killing frenzy in the beginning, it was literally just me crouching in blue and whatever corner with a shotgun. So I'm just doing my own thing pretty much, I guess. And then 
a lot of single fights. I was just holding a corner, holding a power position alone most of the time, and I would win my battles. And my teammates, all my all the teammates were just doing their own thing, collapsing where they needed to collapse. So I asked uh, Spartan a very similar question because they played Plaza Strongholds as well. One of the things that you guys did, you know, almost perfectly was retaking their setups. Is there anything in particular that you guys are looking for in Plaza Strongholds to retake setups, or is it kind of situational, just giving what's taken t- or giving um, whatever's being gi- uh, taken what's ever being given to you? Excuse me. Um, I would say with retaking setups and Plaza specifically, we just have to slow it down, make sure we're all up. And then we just got to recognize where the numbers are. If we're trapped in blue and they're taking yard back and we notice there's two or three yard, we can just fly out nest and vice versa. If they're still focusing on nest while we're spawning blue or loop, that means we can just push the other side of the map pretty much for free if we just utilize, <laughs> utilize our numbers where we need to. And uh, that's pretty much it, choosing the numbers when they need to be. All right. Now, you've already got some of your more difficult series of the season out of the way. You know, it's just talking about strength of schedule. I think your next biggest test is actually going to be the next Pro League day on September 20. If you guys face off against Splice, do you have any kind of predictions for that? Predictions? It's going to be a rough match. I think it's going to be really uh, some good games. I feel like we still have a lot of time in between those matches for us to improve. Um, I definitely think that on this team, I've felt like just in the past few weeks, we might start off rough initially, but so far I feel like we've been improving each scrim, each match we play. And I feel like that's shown, especially against Optic and Envy, and then showing a dominant performance against Ronin tonight. Um, so I'm going to say, yeah, I think we're going to bring it. I think we can win. That's, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that, I guess. And that's all, he's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Some forest he's going to say a lot, but he's going to say, that's all he's going to say. <laughs> all right, saying, well, congratulations on the win. I completely agree with you guys. You have been uh, improving greatly here with every series and every additional week. Looks like you guys are finally starting to hit your stride in your comfort zone. And that's a match we look forward to uh, in sub- or on September 20th. Thanks so much. All right, Luminosity, convincing 3-0 win over Ronin. Yeah, Ronin, uh, that wasn't the performance that we were expecting from them. I think that's kind of what we were expecting from LG coming out, you know, hot. That last game, it was kind of what I was expecting from the first two games, but still, they definitely made a statement with the way that they were able to manhandle in the first game, really slow it down and manhandle in that second game, and then once Ronin started to kind of show signs of life, they shut that down immediately and got it going. So just a great performance by all four players. Yeah, completely agree. Now, of course, that does it for the third series of the night, but we still have lots of action in store. EG versus Splice, one I'm extremely excited for tonight as well. So we're going to see one of these teams continue to climb the rankings here. But of course, if you like what you see and want to know how you can participate, make sure you head over to halo.gg to find out information and how to attend the events, news, uh, and pretty much anything else involved in the HCS. So that does it for our third match. Like I said, when we come back from this short break, Evil Geniuses versus Splice.